and a good morning to you too welcoming for another video on myself darren hcb class one driver here in the uk and for today this is my trailer and you just seen my truck quick checks on the trailer make sure there's no damage to any of these bits they're all okay right height on there as well going up down the side making sure all these little straps are all in good condition and same for the curtain and then finally the tires not forgetting the back doors along with the light lenses as well make sure they're working and most importantly checking the load inside is all nice and secure as well overnight bag just in case first delivery of today is 111 miles away and about two and a half maybe three hours drive depending on traffic getting past that little area <laughs> Just hit quarter to six with a 5 a.m. start this morning. Weather's holding up. It looks like it might throw it down a little bit later on, but so far it's not doing too bad. Nice and easy one to get to hold on straight forward. Down East Lanks, jump onto the M62 and just keep following that road really. Right past the Leeds, past the M1 junction at Wakefield, straight on down until you come to Hull. Just hoping by the time I get to the Leeds, the traffic's not too bad, but realistically, I'm gonna be looking at about seven o'clock, maybe half past seven getting there, so I'm right in the middle of peak rush hour. Gotta get fuel on the way up as well, so that's gonna put a little bit of uh, time delay on there. Got half a tank at the moment, so I just need to top it up, make sure I've got a full tank. So that's one less thing you have to think about later. Been in that situation quite a few times though in the past where your fuel is like right down to the last hundred kilometers and you're driving to every single service station like nope nope don't take that card i'm like no <laughs> panic sets in it really does come figure out i'm gonna have to dip my hand in 50 quid and claim it back later but luckily i got there when they had 10 kilometers left <laughs> Oh, it was the last service station that I had. It was either the card work at this one or I'm paying 50, 60 quid out of my own pocket and then claiming it back a week later. I don't fancy doing the latter either. So always make sure you got at least half a tank. If you're at half a tank, just top it up. Best way. Going up to Saddleworth Moors at the moment on the M62 still. It's currently 25 to 7, and I'm pretty much driving into the clouds now. And this is the actual highest point of the M62, or it might be the highest point of the motorway to be honest in the UK. There's a sign up here, and I'll read it out when I see it. It's pretty high up though. I keep telling myself one day I'll, pull, I'll try and pull over on the lay-by up here, camp out for the night in the truck. <laughs> It'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Wake up in the morning on Sandworth Moors. Here you go, highest motorway in England, 1,221 feet. That's pretty high, actually. Not 
know my luck though, if we did stay up here one night on the truck, a thunderstorm would probably kick in in the middle of the night. <laughs> Just my luck that. We're coming up as well around the corner up here. So, uh, not everybody's from the UK, are they, who watch these videos? But there's a house right in the middle of the motorway. And it's really famous as well in the UK, this house. I don't know what the background of the story is of the house. You, you hear stuff like they refuse to get paid out or refuse to move when they're trying to build the motorway, so they just built it around them. I believe that's not meant to be true though at the moment. Anymore. I think it got debunked. Should be able to see it in a minute, anyhow. Some nice views this morning up here, though. On the right hand side. It's really crazy just living there. Can't be good for your health though, can it? A lot of carbon monoxide giving off from all the cars. It's got to be really high pollution around here, hasn't it? Really busy motorway. To be fair, since they finished the roadworks around Leeds, it's not as bad. It's really not. It's not as bad now that they've done it all. If you came up here this time last year, it was an absolute nightmare. It would be bumper to bumper all the way back towards Bradford. It would take you a good half hour, 40 minutes sometimes just to get past Leeds area. But yeah, it doesn't seem too bad at the moment. And it's currently quarter past seven. So we're pretty much right in the rush hour as well. Don't get wrong, doing 50 miles per hour. No, 44 anyway. But it's not too bad. No, I think I might have just jinxed myself. <laughs> I'll see in a minute though, see if it comes to a halt. <laughs> Looks to be quite heavy up above, that's all. It's going down from 40, is that 60? It's 60, that's all right. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's not too bad that then, actually. Yeah, this is all right. I wonder what it's like on the way back, though, later on. So we're coming back this way, and it'll probably be around 5 o'clock. Let's see if it's improved for the PM rush hour. Maybe it was a little bit prematurely about the traffic. <laughs> if you're going down the M1 North or South, it's just absolute chaos up here at the moment. Again, it could be an accident or it's just congestion build up from the time. Luckily, I'm going straight down to Hull though, so I'll stay in on the M62. However, on the way back after Hull, I need to go on the M1 Northbound to go to Darlington then onwards to Hartlepool after that so quite a bit of a drive still today it's only taking an hour and 15 minutes to get here though driving time that's not too bad because we've stopped off for fuel as well that took 25 minutes to get fuel So far, right, it's just time wise to get up here. Do that construction over there? Yeah, okay. 
It's not the motorway though, so it shouldn't really be affecting too much of the traffic. Looks to be more M1 southbound, to be fair. Does you have traffic lights up at the top of that roundabout? Or we're just about to go under. That adds a little bit of delays, doesn't it? Backs up traffic quite a bit. On the top end of the M62 at the moment, 28 miles away from destination, so not too far away from Hull. But they've got big roadworks around here on this bridge at the moment, and it's currently down to 30 miles per hour, but we're doing 20 miles an hour. It feels really, really slow when you do 20 miles per hour on a big road like this. On the countryside, like Scotland for an example, or Wales, if you're doing 20 miles per hour, because the road's more narrow, it feels that I'm doing 30. Whereas I'm doing 20, 25 miles per hour on a motorway, it feels like I'm doing 10. <laughs> Not too sure what I'm doing. I think it is bridge repairs by the looks of it, or maybe the barriers in the middle. Cornfields down the left, aren't they? A wheat field, shall I say, actually. Saying at the moment, I'm due to get to the destination for 20 to 9. It's not really too bad. Got 2 hours and 40 driving time left as well. So to do 28 miles, I'm looking at about 45 minutes, 50 minutes maybe. Still got nine miles to go. It's quite a big bridge, this Humber Bridge. Never been across it though. Been underneath it a few times on this road. Slow down, let these in. Come on, buddy, speed up a little bit. Give you a flash. I'm not too sure if it's a toll bridge or not, as well. A little bit like Dartford Crossing. Surprise me if it was though, to be fair. And the destination is pretty much just straight off this road as well. And some of the industrial estate. Oh, industrial estate, I should say. <laughs> I do know the difference, don't worry folks, it's just the accent and where I'm from, the region and all that. Lot. I think the industrial estate is about a half a mile off the road, if that. Gone a little bit more crazy though with traffic, hasn't it? Lots of road works going on, so I'm getting diverted. I think that used to be the main road on the right hand side. It looks like digging out a new tunnel or something. Oh, actually, I don't know if that's a new road or is it the original? Not too sure, there's a lot of road works going on. I've pretty much just got to sit in the left hand lane anyway because it's a little bit more wider than the right and plus it keeps the blind spots on the passenger side nice and free I don't have to worry about that side for cars trying to sneak their way around I think I've got to come through all this as well to get back out uh, A63 I'm going to I 
little chicanes, isn't it? Sneaking around. Just gotta keep a close eye on the trailer, make sure it goes where I want it to go. Not cutting the corner, especially when there's a car right next to the trailer. In this part of all, actually, I've already been to Hull a handful of times, and the place that I have been a few times is about a mile and a half back, it was just off the estate. Okay, I think it needs to be on. This lane. Yeah, I've got to turn the first exit on the roundabout. And I've still got about two miles to go. Hopefully it'll clear up a little bit more. So that's the place that I'm going to have to go in myself shortly. And do the same manoeuvre as well. Looks fairly tight to be fair. So I had to pop a little bit of the truck over onto the kerbs. Don't worry though folks, there's plenty of space for five prams width to get through and wheelchairs etc so I'm not taking up all the pavement uh, it looks it might be a backdoor tip if that's so I'm going to have to take off all the straps of the internal and get all that done so they can just run on and off with their pump truck no problems it's just hit 9 o'clock now and I'm just waiting for the guys to finish off loading the gentleman who's gone in now and then I've got a reverse down. So hopefully, shouldn't be too long, but it's a waiting game. So I've got a bit more space. For the maneuver, it's quite tight as you can see. left turn straight up a little bit down now mm. I just got to be careful though because there's a cherry picker about midway through on the passenger side so I need to try and keep it a little bit too bright a bit more Leave it there for a minute, do the doors and then carry on reversing. Luckily the double checks, it's gonna be a side tip with a fork drop. Should do it about there, because it's gonna be coming out of that side. 
Job number one all completed. It's just about to hit 10 o'clock and I've got 113 miles to the next one. However, because it's two and a half hours drive, I don't have long enough driving time really to get here. So I'm going to have to take a 45 minute break in the meantime. So all I need to do is go straight on the M62, M1 North, and then follow it all the way up to the M1A, I think it might be. We'll see when we get there. Darlington is the next destination. Got quite a long one now coming past. I'm just going to slow down a little bit so they can get past nice and safely. These abnormal loads. Go down to about 50 for him. Not got a clue what it is though. It looks like a train. Looks like you can see little windows on the side. Yeah, a little flash, let him pass. They're going a little bit quicker than me, you might as well slow down, let them pass. Saves them being stuck in the middle lane. Just taking my break on the services just by the A1 South and the M62. I'm not really too sure what the name of it is, other than it's a motor service. It's not too bad, the parking's not great though, unfortunately, for trucks. It's got everything you need inside, KFC, um, Greg's, I think Costa, and I think there's a couple of little stuff in there as well. It's got some facilities. Oh, what's it called now? I can't remember for the life of me. I didn't really check, to be honest with you, when I was there. The downside is the parking, it's a little bit, a little bit busy, especially this time of the day though, because it's currently 12 o'clock. So that is the brakes all taken care of. I just need to keep an eye on the working time directive though, because I need to have at least a 15 minute break before 6 o'clock. I'm hoping it'll be nearly home by 6 o'clock. And I'm hoping I won't be staying out tonight, if being honest with you. But I've got an hour and a half until the next job. So then I'll take me down to three hours left of driving and I've got to go to Hartlepool and then drive back from Hartlepool. It's going to be a little bit of hit and miss for the driving time but the working time I should have enough hours. I can also extend the driving time as well by one hour when they have a 45 minute break. So today is probably going to be at least a 10 hour driving day. Seems a long time doesn't it? It's not too bad though. There's not much traffic, we should make it there and back. Go jump onto the A1 M North. All the way up to Darlington now. I think Darlington is pretty much just off here as well. I don't think it's too far in where the actual drop off is. No, they don't want to move over. Slow down, let them pass. Arrived in Darlington now. I'm two miles away from the destination. Uh, first time driving around here as well, so I don't really know the roads too much, so I just need to be careful with that. Especially with all the lanes, etc. Currently 20 past one now. Due to get there for half past. Again, traffic has just been absolutely fine today. Do I jinx myself for on the way back? Like on the way up here, it's been great. I 
around Hull, to be fair, was quite heavy because of the yard, the roadworks, what are all going on with construction, but it was all still moving, it wasn't a case of stop start and it's just slowing down to 40 miles per hour. There's a little train there in the middle. That looks a nice bar there in front as well. What's that, the woolen mill? Needs to go that way. Uh, 167, yep, following it still this way. That's a nice big church there as well to the left. First time I've ever been in Darlington, it's in quite a nice little place. If you ever come at junctions like this where it's a little bit tight for the left turn and there's barriers up as well so you can't really cut the corner because it'll just rip the trailer apart and the barriers don't be afraid to take up more space for example there's three lanes then so I've took up two lanes and the left indicator on just so the car behind me knows that I'm going to be swinging to the left so don't ever be afraid of taking that little bit extra room when you need it it's better to take more space and then have plenty when you're turning instead of not taking enough and getting stuck later. And we're right, it's that more peasant gonna stop. Ah, I should be on here somewhere. Let's try and find where we are then. Gotta be reversing where that lady is now. Pretty much where that van just went. We've got hazard lights on. Uh, I've got a car on the other side as well. Can just see them. Well, it looked like they were trying to overtake. On the passenger side, it's not really a good idea. It's nice and slow when you're going round. just there. I've got 20 pallets coming off at this place but because they're only so small and it's quite busy on the other side so all I need to do is just wiggle them to the end really. They're not heavy so it's not too bad. Number two done, next stop Hartlepool. I'm from Darlington it's just under one hour drive 30 miles due to get there 10 past three I'd say. Just coming up to three o'clock now and I've arrived over at Hartlepool Got a mile and a quarter left to go, so should be there in about five minutes or so. It's a nice little drive coming down towards Hartlepool. Currently on the A179. Let's just try and take a little bit more of that corner. As you're driving down the main road, you can see all the boats in the distance off in the sea. I think they're all fishing vessels or maybe oil tankers. Not too sure, they're quite big to be fair. Now, it's been a while since I have been down this way. Last time I did come round, 
I believe it was the Tall Ship event. I've done a vlog for it, so it is on the channel if you want to go check it out. Well, it's definitely worth coming down for the day with the family. We made a little day of it, drove up. Myself, Alvin, Leanne, brought my mum with us as well. And the tall ships, I don't know if you know what they are, it's like the old, not quite a galleon as such, but that style, like old ships, with the huge sails, and they have a race around the world. So if it is on again, it's definitely worth coming down. Uh, so I'm expecting to be just around here somewhere. Unfortunately, somebody's beat me to it, so I've got to wait for them to finish getting loaded. Well, start getting loaded and then finish getting loaded. And then once they're out of the way, I can then park in position. So in the meantime, let's get myself booked in with the Goods Out team. All booked in, so it shouldn't be too long now. Whilst I'm waiting as well, I've stuck on a 15 minutes break because it's going to be longer than 15 minutes, so you might as well just take the 15 minute break so then when i'm driving back if i do need to extend my driving time all i need to do is take a 30 minute break later on and also whilst i was here i thought this place looks a little bit familiar and as i was talking about the big ships or the tall ships on the way in here then i remember myself a parts down here for that event because there's loads of fields around these the businesses around this area and yeah they use it as parking so i thought yeah it's a little bit familiar this place just thought to myself, whilst I'm waiting, I might as well do a little bit of route planning for on the way back. To get back, I'm looking just over three hours drive. Probably going to be three and a half hours drive with traffic around Leeds, Bradford area, etc. And then coming up towards Bolton on the M60, that'll get quite heavy around there. It's 138 miles in total. However, at the moment, I've got three hours and 47 minutes of driving time. In theory... I should be able to extend it for another hour if needed by taking the other 30 minute break. However, I need to finish before eight o'clock tonight because I started at five o'clock this morning. Seems a long time that, doesn't it? Seems a very long day when you say it that way. But however, if there's a possibility of getting home and spending time with the family instead of sleeping on the services, I'd much rather do that. All loaded up and ready now to hit the road. Unfortunately, it's taken a lot longer than what was expected to get loaded up today. I've been here for about two hours. I think it's like just well, three o'clock it was, wasn't it, arrived? It's just hit five o'clock now, so it's gonna be a tight one. As I've got three hours to get home, or back to the yard, shall I say. I've got until eight o'clock tonight. That's my 15 hours working time. I'm on hour 12 right now. Currently, driving time, I've got three hours. <laughs> you could have write it, you could have write it. Literally, if I have two minutes of delays or anything, I'm screwed. I've got three minutes to spare, and that is not including traffic. 138 miles, three hours drive. Let's go. If it stays like this all the way, then I'm winning. I should be able to get back to the yard for eight o'clock tonight. However, <laughs> big however i've got leeds and bradford and bolton and manchester all them parts of the motorways to contend with which isn't really that good i'm looking at least 25 minutes delays there are realistically hmm. so what i'm going to do i'm going to make my way down towards skelton lake services because they're nice service stations I quite like the ones and i'm going to make my mind up around then whether it's worth continuing or just park up for the night i'll be getting there probably about an hour give or take anyway so that'll still be 13 hours done so still a long day isn't it not exactly what i needed really not what i needed this kind of seals it i'm not really making it home tonight am i This is not good. I don't know if it's roadworks, congestion, accident, maybe. We're being pretty much stood still. Oh, weave away, it's not what I needed. Not right away. Still got 125 miles to go as well. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, well, can't do anything about it now. It is what it is. Luckily, the last bit of traffic it's seen before was only on for about five minutes. 
so it was all right it cleared up pretty much straight away I'm on the A168 two miles away from the A1M and it's currently six o'clock sat nav is still saying I'm going to back at the yard at five to eight I've got two hours left of driving time so it is possible to get there and finish within the next two hours and that will be 15 hours working time completed so it's still up in the air at the moment it's still up in the air As you guessed it, Skelm Lake it is. So here we are, Skelton Lake Services, parked up for the night. It's currently quarter to seven, so I'm running up to 14 hours at the moment. I'm absolutely knackered, I'm not gonna lie. And the good thing about this service as well, you've got security everywhere, which is really good since we've got a load on. So, oh, first things first, let's pay for parking and then get some dinner. Overall though, they are good services to stop at. Especially for food as well, there's loads to choose from, including Pizza Express. And for dinner today, Nando's. And if you're case you're wondering what I went for, fully loaded wrap. Really, really nice DR from there. And the rest of the evening, this is me. So if you did enjoy the videos, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.